Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Tool Tuesday. This is a semi-regular tool-based video series where I look at the uh, the instruments of the luthiers trade and, uh, you know, tips and tricks and bits and pieces, some restorations, you know, fun stuff. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! Today I have an opportunity. Uh, a few weeks back, I, I received a set of Workshop Heaven's Victorian cabinet makers chisels. These are bevel edged. They are fantastic. Best London pattern octagonal handles, uh, custom made Narex blades brought together uh, by Workshop Heaven. And uh, by all accounts, they're a fantastic set of chisels. The only problem is I haven't sharpened them yet. And uh, as they come from the factory, I could do some serious damage, but they're just not quite there today. Today I'm gonna go through two separate sharpening techniques, and I'm gonna show you the pros and the cons of either. One is the scary sharp, which is something that I denigrated for many, many years. Uh, I thought it was just rubbish. I was wrong. And the other is using a more traditional waterstone and uh, hand-based technique. Let's see. Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. And uh, yeah, onwards. Ah, six chisels to sharpen. Sounds like fun. I suppose we'll do we'll do these two because they're the closest in size. Very beautiful, very long, a very fine edge to get into the uh, most delicate of spaces. And uh, yeah, as they come, as they come, many people could use them. Not me though. Nope, well, it needs to be as sharp as humanly possible. What I'm about to describe to you, do not do on a plain blade. I don't use, I don't register using the back of the chisel on anything really for the most part. And when I do, it's not necessary for, for it to be micron precise. Now, Something I do do a lot is sharpen my chisels, and I want that to be done as rapidly as possible so that I can get back to what I'm actually supposed to be doing, which is, you know, building guitars. Now, with chisels, what you can do is very gently take a fraction of a thousandth of an inch off this section here. Shout at me in the comments below. And what that means is that when I am leveling the back of the chisel, which has to be done, or polishing the back of the chisel, I'm only working on the front edge. Look at Japanese chisels and uh, you will see what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, on to the scary sharp system. First of all, I'm gonna time the process. So what I have here is a thin strip of uh, pretty coarse uh, abrasive. This is 3M abrasive, and I'm literally just removing a section of material from here. This only has to be done once, really. And that means, there you go. I've removed a fraction of a micron, and it means that this next stage is gonna be easier. I'm just using water there are other options available. Now, in order to get a properly sharp tool, you have to, both faces have to meet at a properly polished surface. And actually getting that surface, that is the issue. So there we go. 
within, well, a minute and three quarters, including talking time, I've got the back of that chisel to perfection. So the next stage, the next stage is the bevel, and that's the easiest bit, really. So, now I need to set the bevel, and I'm not gonna match what it came with. I'm gonna go slightly, at a slightly higher angle. And create essentially a micro bevel. And it is quite important uh, using the scary sharp system to only really pull. There we go. Where are we? Three and a half minutes. Actually, before I uh, test it, I need to start timing again and uh, just clean the back up again, just uh, take off any burr that might have uh, developed. And there we have it. Let's have a close up. And there we've got a, a secondary bevel. And essentially the whole point of this is that maybe instead of uh, a 30 degree or a 25 degree bevel, I've got, I don't know, 29 and a half, for example. And it makes zero difference to the usability of the tool, but what it does do is mean that I'm removing a lot less material and spending a hell of a lot less time doing it. Now, do I enjoy this process more than Waterstones? Not really. Is it faster? Well, I did that on a never before sharpened chisel in under four minutes, so yeah. Yeah, it is. Let's shave. Or would you rather cut some wood? What is this grain doing? I haven't got a clue. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> that is as smooth and shiny a finish as one could want. And again, I knew it would be. That is chisel number one in under four minutes. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Uh, now, budget. Scary Sharp uh, is relatively inexpensive. You need a piece of float glass. I've got about eight millimeter thick stuff uh, that came from... Huh, Canadian company, makes planes and things. Completely forgotten their name now. Crikey. Wow, I need more coffee in my system. Uh, <sighs> A uh, 10 mil float glass is probably better. It's nice and flat and cheap. Uh, I got the uh, the initial 3M abrasives from uh, Workshop Heaven. Uh, you can get them almost anywhere. They come uh, with a, an adhesive backing already, which is what makes it so much better. And it's made by 3M. The quality is impeccable. Trying to do this with standard wet and dry paper is why I hated Scary Sharp. Doing it with the wrong materials gives you bad results. Uh, and uh, they actually last a hell of a long time, even with regular use. Uh, long term, maybe more expensive than a good sharpening stone. It's a bit not too sure though. So that worked, that worked very well. The next stage is to go with another chisel and I'm gonna use the technique that I have used and as was taught to me by my, my old master, 
many years ago. Uh, I was using standard water stones. These are actually Shapton glass ceramic stones. Uh, the technique though uh, has not changed uh, in any way, shape or form. The same process uh, is, it's the same process. Essentially you're taking uh, a medium with a grit in it. In this case, well, I don't actually think I need to start at 500. So I'm just gonna go 2000 grit to 8000 grit and uh, I'm polishing the metal and creating a point where the edges meet with as few serrations. Uh, if you're looking at this with a microscope, you would see, uh, you know, an edge like a bread knife. You want to reduce that and make that as smooth as possible so that it cuts as easily as possible with fewer snags and, and issues. So, well, I'm also not Although I could do the same process in uh, removing the central section of the, of the, uh, the chisel. I'm not gonna do that in this case because that's not what I've done ever. Let us just start, shall we? Uh, 2000 grit. Now these stones don't need to be wet all the time like traditional water stones. And essentially all you do is that. And you can actually see where in the manufacturing process, it's not as flat as the stone is already. So 2000 grit. Well, I'm gonna stick exactly with my former technique. What I was taught was to seat the bevel and without the use of a honing guide. Oh my gosh, I haven't started timing, timing. Let's add a minute on because I've, well, 30 seconds, because I've done a little bit. So there we go, I'm seating the bevel. And again, you can see where the bevel was put on with something that had a curve in it. So I'm flattening it in areas and getting rid of that curve. I might end up with a convex bevel here, and that doesn't actually make a difference. All I really care about is the cutting edge. I also don't care whether it's 25 degrees or 26 degrees or even 20 degrees. It, it's a variation of a degree or two won't make much of a difference. A variation between of five degrees, like between 25 and 30, for example, yeah, that makes a difference. Okay, so, and then, Throughout the process, I want to remove any burrs. We're getting there. Now I can hear when I'm working on the uh, actual edge of the, of the tool. We're getting there. It's not perfect, but uh, in the interests of expediency, I'm going to move on because uh, I have polished all the way up to the edge. On to 8,000 grit. You can see where I knocked a divot out of this uh, stone one day. This isn't as precise. Doing this by hand is more of a feel and takes a lot of time, a lot of practice to get right. And even so, if you're distracted by, I don't know, talking to a camera, <laughs> you can slip up and uh, carve a chunk out of, the, uh, out of the stone while you're doing it. So here we go. So I've got a small area there where I haven't managed to polish with the 8000 grit all the way up to the edge. And that is, that is a problem. Now the stones, you have to flatten stones like this on a regular basis uh, with Shaptons, because they're glass and ceramic, they last a lot longer, but uh, they are not as flat as the Scary Sharp system. Float glass and a very, very thin bit of uh, <sighs> engineered paper or plastic with uh, grit in it is sharper. I wasn't expecting to have this uh, corner disappear from me. Yeah, still there. 
I'm gonna have to go back to the 2000. Nearly there. still getting it. Okay. You can see how just that edge, just that top corner, is taking ages to remove. And uh, this is the problem. Uh, we are at nine minutes so far. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so at that stage, we're pretty much there. Use a, a strop impregnated with chrome polish or something like that, just to get the final, final polish. And uh, yeah, that was like 12 minutes or so. Well, 11 and a half minutes plus. Now, I think it's a shinier finish and I suspect it's gonna be sharper. Yep, that certainly is shaving easier. But, it took three times as long. So let's compare and contrast. The one done with the water stones is, well, doesn't have a micro bevel or a secondary bevel. Feels sharper. Only just and took three times as long to sharpen. Now imagine if, now imagine if these chisels had not been brand new chisels, but somebody had uh, used them to open a paint can or something like that. To be frank, that is where you need to uh, think about, for example, I use the Robert Sorby Pro Edge here. It's one of my favorite uh, machines for sharpening tools. Getting uh, rid of chips and nastiness like that, a machine is, is much better. If that 12 minutes had been spent on a chisel that had never been sharpened, uh, or hadn't been sharpened in 50 years, for example, you can easily lose an hour. Okay, hold on. So, well, same, same thing. It's, it's basically, basically effortless. Super shiny. Perfect chisel. All it took was time. So, I have four more chisels to sharpen. Can you guess, in the comments, which of these two systems I'm going to use? Uh, now, I could spend a little bit more time on the scary sharp to get a better result. I can, uh, well, absolutely. That's, that's the way forward, spend a little bit more time on that. I can use a, a honing guide while using the ceramic stones. I even have a, I think 
yeah, there you go. I've got an 8,000 grit. 8,000 grit? 16,000 grits Shapton stone here if I really want to go absolutely crazy. Is it necessary to go to these extremes to get the shiniest, sharpest chisel? Not really. Not really. And I could, of course, also use the strop on the Shapton sharpened. Sorry, <laughs> the scary sharp sharpened system. That will also bring in just a little bit extra sharpness. Uh, there we go, that's the evidence. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Please click like, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, let me know what system you use and, and what system you prefer. And if you have yeah, Toolmac, for example, or the, the uh, Robert Sorby Pro Edge, or one of those whirly round mechanical ones. Uh, if you've seen videos by anybody else, and uh, let me know, and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Goodbye. I've got some chisels to sharpen. My phone is literally just beeped. And the email that I'm getting is the Workshop Heaven Halloween newsletter. Um, open up, trick or treat, with the harvest safely gathered in and the dark nights after some hain fast approaching, the ancient country traditions of mumming, souling and guising remain alive. And well, although these days the kids know them as trick or treat at workshopheaven.com, we're getting into the spirit of the occasion with free Halloween sweets for every customer until the end of October. There we go. Um, I love this company. I freaking love this company. And literally, I felt as I was doing my outro, I felt my phone vibrate. And, uh, and this is what came through. It could not be better timed. Uh, Workshop Heaven, they do the scary shop system, they do uh, these fantastic chisels that uh, I'm very much looking forward to working with, and uh, they are an awesome company. Um, I The chisels were free, uh, I suppose I'm semi-sponsored by them, I suppose, sort of thing, but uh, yeah, excellent tools. Ooh. Fujikawa already Nomi boxed set of 10 Japanese chisels. So damn dang. They're in stock as well. A specially selected grade of Hitachi white paper steel number one to make the Hagani layer that forms the back and the cutting edge. God, I'm tempted. Have a good day. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>